Welcome. We have a very, very special guest. Extremely special guest. Our with cold great cuts hair. Fans. With excellent with hair. Impeccable hair. hair. And it took no time to set up either. We just logged right in and it just looked perfect. Steven uh, Seagal. <laughs> no, 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 I'm <laughs> Boo. <laughs> we, have, we have with us Kyle Edward Ball of Skinamarink fame. Uh, you guys may have seen this movie in theaters or now recently on home video. Or if you're uh, cool, though, you know him from Heck. Okay, that's what that's the, also the OG true. Kyle has. Bite size nightmares. Yeah. But Kyle, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Yeah, this is awesome, man. I'm, sure. I'm, uh, we've been so excited the past like week. <laughs> like, it was, uh, like, I was talking with you guys before the like when we were in the green room, but it was just cool because I'm actually like fans of your comics and then when i saw you guys followed me i'm like oh that's neat and that's been kind of the cool thing with this movie is like so, like celebrities have started following me right so like <laughs> i like, don't know if we qualify as that exactly but uh <laughs> well you have more speak, followers speak, than speak me. for yourself sister <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it i'll take it um well, i mean dude what like i if it makes you, I don't know if this means anything, but dude, I was fucking shitting my pants getting ready for this interview. I was like, yo, this Aww. is like such a big pull for us. I mean, and I also obviously I I greatly enjoyed Skin and Marink, which also made not to interject, but probably safe to say there will be some spoilers about the movie that we'll be talking about a bit. So if anybody has not seen it, I guess uh maybe the spoilers for Skin and Marink are very like existential. Kind of. Uh, yeah, or just, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's like an, an average movie spoiler, but yes, pause this. Kaylee, and, uh, Kaylee, is, uh, Kaylee is Kaiser Sose. Oh, there we go. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. I knew facts. It. Yeah. All right, number one facts. You know, right. I, did, I did actually want to ask, like, right out the gate. I'm, You're I'm sure. You're starting with your questions? I, this is just one question starting, that I. I always know I, when Harris is super excited for an interview because he'll text me and go, Yo, I got questions. I, yeah, I, I, no, I wrote don't, down you don't some embarrass questions. me. Don't, you're I'm embarrassing sorry. Me. I just, I'm too I, excited. I, I'm excited. I'm a huge horror movie fan, and I also really oh, yeah. like. Um, I enjoyed. I really enjoyed Skin of Rink, and I happen to. It scratches a certain itch of mine that I love in horror movies, which is, first of all, low budget. I I really like just low budget movies in general, and also, I like a horror movie that doesn't let you all the way in. Like I like a horror movie where you're not fully revealed one of one of my favorite horror movies is Blair Witch Project which I think there are a ton of parallels that you can draw between Skin of Marink and Blair the Witch parallels just in production with Blair Witch Project or Eerie like they took I think eight days or seven days to film yeah. same with ours the budget was their budget was slightly higher but not by light years mm -hmm. like yeah like it's eerie and and also do, uh, in Oh, go ahead. The, the douchebag move of returning your camera right after filming Skin and Rink, though, right? Because I, I think that's what Blair that's Witch what they did. did. Yeah, they yeah, they, they returned. They, they oh, no. well, yeah. we my director of photography works for the local film and video co op. So, oh, like, free rentals. Yeah, basic like it, like that wasn't why I picked him, but it helped, right? Like right, sure. right. A little yeah, perk. We had yeah. shot together before we went to film school together. Jamie McCrae, excellent director. Of That's awesome. a buddy, so he's like a college buddy. Yeah, we graduated from film school together and we gravitated towards each other. And like we were a really tight class in film school, but him in particular, we were the North Side crew. So me um jamie and our friend oliver which is kind of neat jamie oliver jamie anyway oliver. so yeah. <laughs> but so we're from the north side of edmonton which is like a tiny we'd like to think we're the rough side of of edmonton i was gonna say you're making it sound like you were in a gang the wrong well, side no, of the no we were north <laughs> side yeah. yeah and also like we were both smokers so naturally we just gravitated towards like you like during break all the smokers would congregate obviously so you'd bond a little and yeah mm -hmm. the cool there you people. go the cool people. Mm -hmm. the i would <laughs> actually say in in skin and even uh i think you actually show even a little bit more than what you see in blair witch i mean blair witch gives you almost nothing like you never you never see anything really and i my question for you was I was just I was curious that of some of the 
sort of practical effects like the uh, chair on the ceiling comes to mind or the final shot spoilers but the the final shot right the face in the dark like some of those effects I was I was curious if any of them or just what was the most difficult shot is there one that like comes to mind of something that was maybe the most challenging shot to create so a lot of the special effects that like in writing I thought oh this is going to be a pain were weirdly easy like in in post so the 572 day shot I thought oh this is going to take forever it took a day on the computer it was just easy We're keying out, out stuff. yeah yeah and then the windows and doors disappearing some were easy like done and mm -hmm. some were hard um just because of oh there's this it's not lit well so the, it's not written da, 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 da. Yeah. the chair was pretty easy because it was just i just held the chair up and keep myself out okay and the face was easy but other weird things were were just hard like because like any of the shots that involved movement i had to like scrap and if like in the um in the look under the bed scene uh Crazy, after, scary scene scary fun. thank very, you very unnerving yes yeah and that was like my i want to like room 237 scene right mm -hmm. and so i wrote a scene like that originally in the script the door was supposed to disappear like to uh, the yes bedroom. yes yes and I, like. I couldn't key it out because it's a moving shot it's super low lit even though we were shooting in like raw it was still really hard to do so i just had to change it to oh the door just closes right mm -hmm. but yeah did uh can i ask it uh, how did you create the shot with the face in the dark because um I also watched on Bite Size Nightmares, you have the one called Alone, where, I don't know, I know there's a bunch of them, so maybe I can jog alone, your memory. Alone. It's the one, it's oh, the, yeah, yeah. It's the one where the guy has a dream where the door opens and he says there's a little girl standing yeah. in the hallway, and it's that same effect where you can barely see, but the one in Skin and Rink, obviously, it's like, it's less static in terms of like, yeah. it's like actually moving around. Was it a real face or was it a mask? No, it so be? it was a still image. I won't say what the still image was because if you saw the still, the actual like JPEG, uh -huh. like it's so grainy, it looks so completely different. Uh -huh. And then if you apply enough grain over something, it gives it life. Interesting. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> is um, there a, uh, <clears throat> is the reason you're not saying, what the image is is because it's story relevant or just because it's no just to effect. keep a little bit of uh mystery okay right? like, i like that yeah I like yeah that. I, I think that's fair i mean that shot was extremely that one and the bedroom scene that you described were definitely standout moments as like holy shit that that, that bedroom scene is probably and i'm really not blowing smoke up your ass like probably the scariest scene that i've watched in a horror movie in the last like five years and there's really thank you so much and there's really not much that happens right that's the other side of it like yeah. it's very like i mean it's it's low budget like i mean that shot could have cost nothing right but it's just the way that it's filmed was very clever uh very well done the um the i guess like kind of kind of a another question that i had for you was um this this movie in my eyes would not lend itself to a script very well so did you feel like this was a weird pitch process for this movie so yes and no like with this i was pitching toward so first off there is a formal 96 page script that i wrote for really? this movie that follows the final edit of the movie fairly similar like, it's just in the script, I'm describing, like, okay, here's the dialogue in, like, Kaylee, Ke and then we're looking at the ceiling. Like, that's literally how it's written in this wow. script. Wow, okay. And the look under the bed scene is almost identical to how it's written in the script, more or less, mm -hmm. to the point where when we were... So first we applied for grants, and we had gotten my executive producer, Edmund, had won a $500 um, development uh, thing from 
Ampia at the Alberta Media Producers Industry Association. So we took that $500 and did a few things. And also um, my boyfriend at the time is a very talented artist. So he did storyboards for the look under the bed scene. Very cool. So um, cause that was like our, this is our showcase scene. And the storyboards also follow the scene very much to the script and very much to how it turned out. Hmm. Um, so then with pitching it, so I, the big thing that helped pitching was I had heck as a proof of concept. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. And that was always what it was intended to be as a, either proof of concept or stepping stone to a feature both for pitching and for myself right to prove that I could kind of do something more ambitious than a four minute YouTube short um and throughout it because we had oh check out hack I didn't have to explain as much okay this is a weird movie sure um and for the most part, the way I described it was, okay, so we're going to have a feature length movie. People are going to be shown on screen very little. And when you see them, you, you don't really see that much of them. And you'd be surprised how much people kind of understood it, right? Like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to shoot a day's worth of people and the rest is just like stuff around them. Like people kind of clicked in at least on paper to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And because we had a simple um like promotional materials like hack and storyboards that also don't show people's faces etc mm. people people kind of got it um with that being said when we applied for grants we didn't get any of them so mm. we had to crowdfund and the good thing about applying for grants is a lot of the materials like synopsis da 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 da, da we could just apply to the crowdfund, right? So, um, yeah. That's cool. I mean, yeah. clearly it was like a, a big success. The crowd, I think the crowdfund actually was probably a, probably a good way to also get more people invested in the project, you know, like even yeah. before it came out, right? I mean, almost as a promotional material, because I think if somebody feels like, yeah, you know, I helped make this thing, I think they're already going to want to go out and see it when it comes out speaking of you should hit up these places you applied for the grants that didn't apply and be like yeah, if you guys ever need well, money like, or need a I grant think, yeah i, could I think stuff. like i think just seeing the success of the movie has been kind of revenge enough and yeah, like granted like you know <laughs> it's my director of photography he had actually a previously applied for a grant for his own thing from one of these organizations that I'm not going to name and successfully got it. And B after that had been on the jury. So when we submitted our application for the grant, I had him vet our grant proposal. I, I worked so hard on these grant proposals and still didn't get it. Um, but yeah, it worked and, out. It, it worked yeah, out. It worked, it worked out. out. You know. What can you do? I mean, uh, yeah. I think that's great, and I think it's awesome that you had this sort this proof of concept. Uh, the YouTube channel is is awesome. I mean, in preparation to be talking to you today, I watched like a fair bit of the channel, and I I even was watching. Uh, you have some uploads on there that are like three hours of creepy cartoons to yeah. study and relax to, which I thought was cool too. So I made a few of those actually when I was writing the script, I was like, I need something to just have in the background. That's not a podcast because a podcaster, I can't have someone talk and da, 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 yeah. da. but I can't just have silence. I need something to get myself in the mood. And I'm like, oh, all these cartoons I'm going to use, Why I could not? use those, right? Yeah. So I created these compilations and yeah. That's awesome. Are we, you know, the, um, one of my one of my favorite albums, uh, like my like one of my favorite music albums is Disintegration by The Cure, which they talk about in the in that recording process. Uh, and talk about apparently it was like a it was miserable, like all of them were in a terrible state of mind. I'm sure they were all on drugs. They all were really sad. But I think all of that emotion really kind of like 
you know, it worked in the album's favor because you can feel it on the album. It sounds dreary. It sounds like they recorded it in a fucking dreary ass house, right? Did would you describe the Skinnamarink filming process as fun, or did you feel because it's kind of a joyless movie? Did well, uh, you did it at your childhood home, right? Yeah. So the fil- actual filming. So it's like this much writing and pre-production this much editing this much filming right yeah and the filming was like the only joyful part of it the rest of it like okay so when when i wrote it it was the second wave of covid 19. Mm -hmm. so and you know how the second wave was the really big one so it was really it was a really dark time and it was the middle of winter here. It was, I was in a really dark place when I wrote it. And editing it was even darker because my friend Joshua, who was assistant director on the movie, had passed away. So, it's terrible. Th- thank you. So, um, that was a really dark time too. So, really, the only kind of happy time was when we were shooting it. Um, because I was like at my parents' house, oh, I'm shooting my first feature movie, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, things went like as planned when we were shooting it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a little dreary though, because like it was the not middle of summer, it was like in August at my parents' house, air conditioned and everything, super comfortable, but you don't really understand till it happens the effect of having windows covered during the day right because mm-hmm. we had to have all the windows blacked out and it just messes with your chemistry in a weird way like my mom oh, yeah. said one day because some parts of the house we would leave them up um and some parts the only like window dressings we took down were the living room ones because they needed my family needed some light and also like they had plants there blah 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 that they didn't want to die and so my mom said you know the other day I went into a room and I, I turned on the light and I'm like something's weird and she couldn't put her finger on it until she's like oh there's zero light coming in zero right mm-hmm. no street light no mo- nothing right so but for the most part outside of that filming it was very happy writing and editing it were miserable and on top of that when i was editing it took about three to four months to edit it and it wasn't that like i had all the footage i had all the audio but um editing it was just on top of like you know all my friend died and he helped me with this that's sad and upsetting and da 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 but i it also gave me a well i have to um do good to do good to his memory i have to make sure the movie's good but then when i had a rough cut it was around Christmas time and i was sending it to a handful of people on the crew to get feedback and most of them were taking their time because it was right around Christmas and on top of that like like I think it was just mostly all it was around Christmas and I got super in my head about it like why why are you taking your time watching this like I was getting more and more angry like why aren't you providing feedback one week Mm -hmm. two week three week and in reality if you're you're ever sent something as homework for feedback to watch it can be very just like you could after a while if you haven't watched it you start to resent it like i have to watch this thing as homework right and but i wasn't thinking about that i was just pissed off so it just kept getting darker and darker and darker and it turned out in the end but yeah Yeah. were you reaching a point where uh because i I know with like editing and animation when you're working on a project and seeing like the same frames over and over again were you ever reaching a point where you were like 
Yo, fuck Skin and Marine. Yeah, I fucking feel, hate Skin like, and Marine. Doubtful? Did you ever sort of doubt uh, that, Yeah, but that's not fuck Skin and Marine, but there was. It was a little bit of that is just kind of a part of the process, yeah. right? Yeah. And another that I kind of knew again from doing Heck. Uh, I highly recommend if you're ever going to do a feature, do a stepping stone proof of concept, not just to prove the concept, but to do it for yourself, right? Yeah, like yeah. I've done this before at a medium size. Now I can do it. Big. So you're mm -hmm. used to those emotions, but there was a lot of, a lot of like, and this, I feel terrible about this just in my mind of fuck other people. Why aren't they providing feedback? Why this? Why that? Why the other thing? Right. Yeah. Um, if anything, there was when I sent it to, so the first person to watch it was our associate producer, John Kamech, who was a perfect person to vet it because he hadn't read the script. So he was more or less oh, fresh outside yes. of the synopsis. Yeah. He didn't really know me. Like we had a ton of mutual friends, but he didn't know me. So his biases in that regard were clean. Um, target audience, right? Big horror fan, big slow horror fan, yeah. right? And he actually provided excellent feedback. Um, but outside of that, like when I was sending it to other people who had read the script and some of them had lived and breathed skin and marine for the same amount of time I have, they came back with kind of vague feedback, which sucks. Like vague feedback yeah. is the worst. Cause it's like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. Like yeah. I have no idea what to do with this. And then I was getting pissed off at them. Like I worked my ass off on this. We worked our ass off on this and mm -hmm. you're giving me enough, like, like vague, vague feedback that I don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. Especially because I was so happy with the finished product, like the movie I wanted, like pictured when I was writing it, filming it, editing it. I made it. I was so happy with yeah. it. And they were giving me this, these vagaries. And I'm like, what are you doing to me? Yeah. Right. So well, think God, what a, what a relief, that... what a relief it must've been that, I mean, it, I mean, obviously this movie blew up, right. It just, yeah. like, I mean, it, it, it just went crazy. Like, I, I think, what, did that surprise you? I'm sure people have asked you this a million times, so I'm sorry to be a broken <laughs> record, but like, were you surprised at just the level of like reach that the movie got? So it was one of those things where you hope it's going to happen, you dream it's going to happen, but you couch it in reality the whole time, mm -hmm. right? Okay, it's probably not going to get that level. Oh, God, wouldn't it be great if it did, though? Mm -hmm. But it might not, right? And then the biggest thing was in july i had submitted so i had submitted to fantasia of my own accord like the distributor didn't do it but i just submitted to fantasia and when i say distributor by the way i'm not referring to ifc shutter i'm referring to the small distributor bayview entertainment mm -hmm. um so who's been great by the way um and also this tiny distributor like they've <laughs> I feel so bad for them because they're this very small distributor out of New Jersey who got this supernova sized movie to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. Like they've yeah, yeah. they've been having and they've been having a lot of growing pains in dealing with it. So God bless them. I'm sure they're um, grateful. I'm sure they're grateful. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. But um so there was this period where I was still kind of in the muck and mire of of all the emotions and we hadn't gotten into any festivals a lot of it was because we were waiting on word from the festivals and i thought oh maybe i fucked up maybe the movie i made that came out the way i wanted is no good and i'm the, i'm tommy was out right like you know <laughs> like and um I was incredibly depressed and with Josh, I was sad and I just had this night of just sobbing, 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 like crying over it. Oh mm -hmm. no, really? And yeah, and then Jeez. I woke up to an email from Fantasia and I was like, 
And I opened it and they're like, hi, I'm Justine Smith. I programmed the underground section at Fantasia. I was sent your movie by another programmer at Fantasia. Uh, she thought I'd really like it. She was 100% right. Um, we would like to select your movie for this year's but like, I wow. could not respond fast enough, right? Yeah. Because in Canada, if you do horror, like getting into Fantasia is like getting into Khan, right? Like it's yeah. a huge thing here. So did you uh, cry, it, cry happy tears or no? Keep crying. Uh, I didn't, I, I was done crying at that. I was just <laughs> elated. Like I responded. I had a spring in my step walking to my minimum wage data entry job that morning. Nice. Like, like I like I called my parents and like they don't know what Fantasia is, but I explained to them it's like it's like the con or the Sundance of like weird movies. Like mm -hmm. it's the biggest like genre festival in North America, if not the world, right? Like wow. it was huge thing. Like I in ever since then, it's more or less been an upward trajectory. And then um if you so by the way i i see our zoom times running out just send another link yeah we'll yeah uh yeah so we're doing then, this this is low budget in your honor so we didn't, yeah, we didn't right. pay for zoom it's, yeah 40 minutes that's right no, oh my god no one does you'd be surprised we've had some guests on who are like just fucking buy zoom and oh I'm yeah like, we've had some well, guests that are like i you, i'll you can use my zoom like i pay for it we're like no nah, no nah, it's kind of our thing that's well right. and some understand. of them too like Whenever I had Zoom meetings with IFC and Shutter, they'd be like, we can use Microsoft Teams. And I'm like, do I have to download? I'm such a... Yeah, what the hell? Like, yeah. Do I, I have to yeah. download a thing? And yeah. they're like, it's really easy. We swear. It's just like, I'm like, okay. And then you use <laughs> it. And it is basically just like Zoom. But then there'll be a few times where they're like, Microsoft Teams is, we have to do it through Zoom. And because they're using Microsoft Teams, they're just using the free Zoom. So they have time running out, right? This yeah. giant conglomerate. But, and then the time it really picked up, like I knew it's, it's. This is when you knew you made it. Well, first of all, after Fantasia, that's how we got the shutter deal, right? Mm -hmm. And that felt like winning the lottery, right? Like I was on cloud nine after we got the shutter deal. And there was talk because I'm like, okay, what kind of theatrical? And at that point, I'm like, maybe we'll get a few like New York, LA, Edmonton, like Edmonton, because that's where the filmmaker is. Mm -hmm. And that's it, right? Yeah. And he said, well, at this point, there was a lot of talk of the paranormal activity model, which is I learned was we play 12 college towns, then 12 other college towns, and then we expand and contract based on that. Wow. And then um, we'll get into how it changed. So um, save that for next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right. Get, so, yeah. I, uh, when you said paranormal activity model, I thought they were expecting you to make Skinnamarink one through twelve in the next like no. yeah, <laughs> six months, it. like they did. I just, I, for theatrical release model. <laughs> yeah. I, I just Which, keep thinking of uh, Tommy Wiseau. Two, yeah, me and Harris. It, there's if two you need, if you need two kids to play the new, the next Kylie and Kylie. Hear me out. You put the camera on us for this. It'll be, it'll be crazy. Instead of in the corner of the room, you have it like on us. We, we, yeah. gonna be we like, recreate recreate the dialogue so you say love you love you too yeah, <laughs> exactly I'm I'm, we back we, we back. back baby um, yo has, have you ever thought of changing your name now that you're like a big deal to kyle edward ballin because i feel oh, like well actually crispy, yo. the kyle and <laughs> so the reason it's kyle edward ball was during film school I just didn't like the ring of Kyle Ball. And I'm ball like, Ball okay. is tough to work with. Ball is Yeah. Ball. Well, just, it's so short, Kyle Ball, right? Yeah. Did and... anyone ever tease you and call you Kyle Ball? Oh, oh, all the time. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, it's like mandatory balls. Like, it's, it, like, that's, yeah. Because I, I have an Uncle Paul, and growing up, the man was not called anything other than Uncle Ball. So I, I, I figured, <laughs> I figured it was either like some play on balls or like, like obviously because I'm gay and like wasn't good at sports. Like my nickname a lot of the times, faggot. 
But yo, uh, me too, because I was a, a, a theater kid. <laughs> Oh Yo, twins, God. baby, twins, twins, twins. twins baby. You know, I had, oh, I, had a... I went to, so I went to Vic, which is a, so it's a public high school. And and by the way, my high school experience was actually very positive because I went to a arts performing and visual arts high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it was a public school, but instead of like home ec and shop, they did arts, right? And so at Vic, the theater kids were actually kind of like. The cool kids. The cool, oh God! Sounds yeah, like hell. yeah. That You're sounds like my around, own it's... personal skin rank, honestly. Oh, it's like, like <laughs> my graduating there. year, I think was when Glee came out, and it just oh, went. No. Oh God, dude! Oh, no, no. Right, it's like, a, and that's the year you wrote skin rank out of the horror. It was based on the Glee. Horrors, it's based yeah. on Glee. Well, after that, uh, I have this question here. I, I wrote. The part where you skinned that guy's marink was really scary. Bro, and I just used when... that line on my roommates outside. They <laughs> lost it. They were, oh, really? It was skin a marink. And I was like, dude, this guy's skin gets got marink. marink, bro. Marink. Standing ovation, bro. They were going crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and then it, everybody clapped. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it is a very good, I mean, it's a very solid, memorable name for yeah. a movie. I know that it was. Um, it's a nursery rhyme, right? I know that you, yeah. I, yeah, I know it's a nursery rhyme, but the the song itself is never actually used in the movie, uh, which is probably probably for the best because yeah. it would have been one of those moments. It's like, oh my, th- there it is. Oh, they said it. The they said the line. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded that voice just halfway through the movie, just skin him away. <laughs> like he said it. Oh he my god, I have to, I have to send you this, brother, because. I'm hoping you've seen this. I showed it to Harris and we were just... Is it, is it a video meme? Because I've probably have seen it. It's it is. Uh, the deleted scene from Skin of Rank. Is that the one with the disappearing like Looney Tunes door? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is that, that, yeah. That, what an incredibly well <laughs> done. Amazing. I know. It is well done. It, they, he did it. It's all poser CGI or whatever. I thought it was... Incredible. And actually, I thought it was real scene. too. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I don't remember. I didn't think it was deleted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, really well done. Incredibly well. That's been the best things is seeing the the, the memes, the mm-hmm. nice memes. Um, like, Wait, you're missing and, out, Doug. Speaking of, I, I don't know. If this is technically memeage, but as a gay man, I gotta say your movie struck very hard with the hot hot babe community every hot chick i knew oh, was I know. non-stop yeah. talking about skin america and i was like why why do you Christ. think like why do you think that this movie resonated with people so much i mean considering that you really give the audience so little in terms of like like meat and potatoes you know it's a lot more like vibe driven did what why do you think that it Bro, like because he's kyle ball he is balling okay. I, mean, I, 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 ballin'. yeah. I think it's because uh everyone because there's so little you can imprint yourself on the characters in such a huge way so an Mm -hmm. example i would use would be i don't know if this is true but a friend in college said he likes retro games more than modern games and the reason he said it was because okay because the graphics are lower quality it's easy for you to imprint yourself on the character, like let's say Mario Mm -hmm. versus a modern game because it's so concrete and high def and it's harder to lose yourself. And I don't know if that's necessarily true, but maybe that's the case with this movie, right? So someone online put it best. They said, everyone who watches it gets their own personalized copy. And the fans have been incredible. Mm. through this whole thing like just the stories like someone wrote a piece for i think it was dread central about how heavily they identified with it because growing up they had a horrible childhood Mm. and how the things of it brought them back to when they were little in a dark house and the memories of a wall or a hallway were so imposing and so concrete. And I'm going to cry if I talk about it more. But like just hearing people talk about the way it brought them back to their childhood and even the way 
it dealt with the sad parts of their childhood. Um, I, it was also kind of accident. Like, I think I intentionally picked Kevin being four because like, that was like, my life was perfect up until four years old. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and then I went to kindergarten and my safe house was ruined. Right. Like, so I intentionally picked four years old. That was the last time of pure joy before I was introduced to the world and had to deal with the world. And yeah. Did um uh, try try trying to think how exactly to phrase this in the right way, but when you know this was filmed in your parents' home, right? In your in your childhood home, right? Yeah. So when you showed I'm sure your parents have seen the movie now, right? Like, your yeah, mom, like she, what, what was their reaction to it? Were they, I mean, obviously I'm sure they were proud of you for finishing the movie, but were they like concerned with how dark it was or what, like, what was their expression? They, so number one, they had seen heck mm -hmm. and they, they knew like they hadn't read the script, but they knew enough. They had even like my mom's on Reddit. So she's read, things mm -hmm. about it like they were fairly my mom was knew what it was kind of going to be about and I also gave them a fairly heavy disclaimer before we watched it and even like when we were in production and stuff okay so Kevin and Kaylee are based on me and Candace but the parents are not based on you guys. Mm -hmm. So please don't take it personally. I'm not trying to say anything about how you yeah, raised yeah. me mm -hmm. or how I grew up with this movie, particularly the look under the bed scene. It's not about you guys. Mm -hmm. And I think they understood that and took it to heart. Um, Did you fall like down the stairs? No, like I felt like every kid falls down the stairs a few times, but like th that never happened okay. in my childhood. Like my parents never separated. Um, like the the parents for the most part are are made up, right? Yeah. Um, but like the boy and girl those are based on me and my sister in a sense that okay if i was in this situation what would i say uh if she was in this situation what would candace say etc mm -hmm. um but the parents are are made up um and and obviously that that goes with that being said there's still a lot of my childhood in the movie right so um the toys right a lot of the, the toys. toys like most of those toys with the exception of the lego and even some of the lego like my like my mom had kept a bin of toys from when i was little mm -hmm. and they were very well preserved right so a lot of the teddy bears and toys and stuff those were literally the what we played with as a kid also very conveniently i have a friend who's a lego collector guy mm -hmm. so we had bins and bins of lego to work oh, which is what i wanted and so yeah here's my question okay because harris has had his chance to flex his his brainiac his brain muscle <laughs> um, wait okay so before we get to that because you had asked when did you know it had really broke yes right and yes. i don't know if yeah. i 100 percent answered that so after Fantasia, Shutter Deal, okay, awesome, right? Then we played, then, okay, we're going to play a few festivals. We're going to release Halloween 2023. Mm -hmm. Then we played a festival in Europe. I don't want to say which one because I don't want it to harm the festival. They're a great festival, but they had an online portion. Mm -hmm. And it took less than 24 hours for it to be leaked as a result of the online festival. Uh, I, I think I read about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was a crazy thing too, because it was like wildfire. Mm -hmm. Right. So it felt like all these fires were happening and I was with the distributor 
that was so small they couldn't really accommodate and like there's only so much even ifc could do right or, mm -hmm. or, or shutter could do right like if it's out there it's out there and i was in this weird like all of a sudden there was twitter arguments about it right and at the time because i didn't know how it would pan out i didn't know if shutter was going to rip up the deal i didn't like i didn't know how to deal with it it was terrible but then about three it was right around halloween too so it ruined my halloween oh i'm sorry but it was did you have a cool it's... costume i was gonna go as a sexy gordy from nope like the monkey oh. from nope <laughs> oh cool. baby all right all right um, did you still do that or was it ruined because of no all... i didn't go out right wow no right, yeah what a shame. so but then after about three weeks shutter had found out about it and they messaged me and they said don't worry we'll deal with it we'll accommodate it they bumped up the release date till january 13th and then that kind of whole period of we're going to play in 800 theaters. Twitter's blowing up about the movie. Reddit's blowing up about the movie. TikTok, everybody was talking about TikTok. it. TikTok, that's crazy. when I really got, okay, this doesn't happen to most movies. That yeah, was yeah. when I realized I had made it. And just so we're clear about everything, so the people who pirated it, you're they coming did... to kill them. We are going no, to find no, you. No, we're going no, to find no, you. Coming not to find going... you. We are... <laughs> so, okay. So when I say the people, so the people who found it online and watched it, a pirated copy, they didn't know we had a shutter deal. They didn't know we had an IFC deal. They found a movie and fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it wasn't so out of malice. It was out I of have malice. no ill will towards them especially the people who watched it and loved it and talked about it like that was kind of a way of paying for it right like they they promoted it in some sort of fashion i don't know if we would have played in 800 theaters if it weren't for the pirates like it's hard to say the piracy may have helped this particular circumstance i don't mm. want filmmakers to think oh well, I'll just leak my line and get a shutter deal. Yeah. Like that's yeah, no. th this was a very specific circumstance, but I want to be clear. The fans who pirated the movie, I have no ill will towards you. I'm just happy you enjoyed my movie. But watch your back. Yeah. Watch right. your back. No, you're, you're going to wake up. You're, you're going to wake here. up in a saw trap and it's going to be Skinner Marink too. You're going to have to escape like from the house. This one guy in Brazil, because someone made a Portuguese fan. Brazil. 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 That's, that's been a whole thing too. When we blew up in Brazil, someone took the subtitles from the pirated copy and made a Portuguese fan sub of it. Oh, yo, let's what? fucking go. That's but crazy. Not that hard though, because um, the original subtitles at the festival it played at were in Spanish, and apparently those are quite huh. easy to translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah interesting. Yeah. So um, we blew up in Brazil. So this person in, in Brazil who had clearly pirated it because that would have been the only way he would have been able to see it in Portuguese, um, changed his Twitter bio to the president of the Kyle Everball fan club. Okay. And his since Based. gotten, since gotten a tattoo of in this house upside down on his chest, Whoa. which is, which is tattoo That's number, ta tattoo number five that I've seen. Probably not. Um, there's probably more, honestly. But hey, one one is a lot, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So how could I be angry that he pirated the movie? Right. right. He clearly yeah. loved you know, it. How he clearly loved angry? it. Plus, how, how can you be I... angry at a Brazilian? It's not. It's, exactly. it's literally not it's possible. Impossible. It's Come not to like Brazil. Um, <laughs> so, like, that's when I knew the was when kids started getting fucking tattoos. Like, that's when yeah. I knew the movie had blow, blown up, right? Like, so that's when. I mean, look, we were, before, we, we were, oh, sorry, Zach. I know you were going to say, say right? before we get into the future, but I, I do have to ask, okay, because I was watching, you know, 
some of your older interviews and I think some of them were kind of just things I was reading, but you were talking about how, cause you know, obviously I think a big thing about this movie that people have enjoyed is if, even if you just type it in on Google, there's 7 billion forum posts of people talking like, what is the meaning? Yeah. What is yeah. the plot? I need to know the that's, plot. and that's, that's an amazing thing. I always wanted that. I always wanted to, even when I was right, I want a movie that people would talk about, talk about and like, for sure. get into the weeds too. And like, yes, this is going to sound so cringe in Reddit, but your this is your movie is the dark souls of movies to me because in, in dark souls, <laughs> there's this like what We'll we'll get into this because this is kind of the question. But in Dark Souls, there's praise, this praise the sun. That's from oh, Dark Souls. Based, right? yes. Based. Oh, I've based, I've based. never based. played it, but I'm, I'm aware of it. I think you'd enjoy it because there's a very dark lore that can only be found if you, um, kind of like read descriptions of things or notice things in the environment. Big but anyway, I I've wound up this question too much. My main question is: I've heard you say in interviews that there's some scenes and some story elements that you are aware of and you know and there's mm-hmm. others that you just kind of wrote and you don't know is that the case yeah i just yeah so there's parts of the movie that i don't even know necessarily what's happening like and there's a few examples of this but the easiest example i would say was when the dad says look under the bed i have no idea why he asked that was the that. one I was the most surprised about. That but was that's the one creepy. I was most surprised about. That is creepy. And some of what the parents' behavior in general in that scene, I have no idea why they're doing. Where it's coming from. But so there's the mom, other things in that scene where 100% I know. The why mom has able... a line that, that like reveals almost, like, there, it almost feels like she gives on a little bit of the plot or exposition in one of her lines where she's apologizing to the kids about, um, I'm not remembering the, you talking about in exactly. Hack when the kid is apologizing about having no, 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 no. I'm talking about in Skin of Marink when we're when when she's sitting at the edge of the bed. Doesn't she say like "I love you"? And she's like, "Your father and I." And then she gets like interrupted by something. Your father and I. And then she hears a door slam. And then she finishes with "Your father and I love you." And Kevin. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I don't know why. <laughs> like that scene doesn't make me sad it's weird this movie awakes weird emotions in weird ways i've described that scene a billion times i've never gotten emotional about it until right now i don't know why it's a but powerful like, scene it's a very powerful, it's a powerful scene. scene i don't know but even for you the I only mean- scene that makes me sad or teary-eyed is when the kids say i love you to each other yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a scare. It's a there's something so vulnerable and insular about the movie, which is I think why it resonated with me so deeply. Like I, I more so than other kind of, you know, grainy handy cam footage. Like you know, like, like even Blair Witch, which I, like I loved Blair Witch, and and then like a bit a much bigger budget one, which we haven't talked about yet. But talk about also fucking like lore if you want to dig deep. Like I I personally love the movie Cloverfield. When that one came out, the oh, original say the one, thing, I bro. I thought that. you were gonna say that, that. was love, that magical era of like you can just do a movie like this and people yes. like that amazing post found footage era. Yes, of like found footage reinventing itself, and it's like I could do this, right? Yes. Like I remember when it came out, being so excited, and I also remember Blair Witch. Blair Witch actually does have a lot of heart. If you watch, mm-hmm. like, there's oh, there's a part where, mm, no, yeah, Mike says so. They're they're going a little crazy, and he's like, Heather, I found I found cigarettes, I found cigarettes, yes, yes. and then the, and then they have a few cigarettes. They set the camera down, and they're just sitting beside each other, smoking. Just yeah, to like like comforting each other. There's yeah. way more heart in that movie than I think people give it credit for. I agree, yeah. and and I th- and I think like part of it is like, especially because it feels so real, and you could and it, it feels so much like you could just be like, wow, this could so easily happen to me and my friends if we just walked into the woods and completely got lost, and then you're just yeah. like, fucked. You know what I mean? Like it really is that easy, and all of that happens. Like I want to say nothing really 
paranormal or otherworldly happens until like a good 45 minutes into the movie and then they find like yeah. the, the twig people Just... hanging and some shit like that and then things start to go really topsy-turvy but the terror uh, you can and, and part of also i know from reading about the filming process of that is also that the director intentionally for those like eight days that they were filming or whatever, like kind of like, up. I think he yeah, starved them. I, yeah. think he kinda, like, I think they weren't <laughs> sleeping. They weren't eating. And so you can feel uh. that desperation and stuff in a lot of those performances with like, Heather for sure. And Mike, like both of them seem all three of them. They all seem like they're re- they're legitimately like, losing it. Exhausted. Yeah. And but yeah, there's a part where, <laughs> Ah, uh, it's so f- I think it's kind of funny. Like, just she's like, because they're lost, they've been going in, certain, and she just says, How do you feel about going east? And he's like, Is it the Wicked Witch of the West or the Wicked Witch of the East? Was it? and she's like, I think the Wicked Witch of the East was a bad one, <laughs> yeah, it's a, dude. It's so yeah. real, and, and they're I, just so exhausted. They're exhausted. And, like, I'm pretty sure that movie, it's interesting to hear you say, I was not expecting you to say that Skinnamarink had like like a 96 page or is that what you said it like at like 96 90, pages 96 so but one page is just the title and by color so 95 still still a counts. Long, that's still a long counts. fucking yeah. script yeah which i which it surprises me because i think actually blair witch i think didn't have a script i think it was like an outline like a one yeah. page outline yeah, of what it, they yeah. wanted to happen but i think it's i think both are very cool in their own ways i think it's very interesting that you had this one we, we, although it feels kind of like loose and flowing in its own way, I think it's interesting to hear that it was very much like it was super out. structured. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, since um, we're back in the script, I gotta get back to the 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 plot aspects of like not knowing about stuff because I I feel like there's a danger when you do something like that that um yeah I, I mean we all i think all three of us took film class that's how harris and i met yeah. in college and there's always the kid who wants to do uh, uh almost like a i want to do like a kyle, kyle Edward ball movie and they it's like just weird to be weird and yeah and there's there's not necessarily any meaning and whenever you see that type of stuff it's always like this kind of sucks but uh well why, there's some is there a reason stuff- you don't think you had that in your movie because i didn't get that vibe a big thing I did was, so I've always looked up to David Lynch and I've always found the reason why David Lynch's stuff works is because it's not weird to be weird. It's weird, but also there's some, there's something in it that he gives you to keep you grounded. So mm. my mom was a big fan of the original twin peach show i think when she was pregnant with me and that That explains a lot Mm -hmm. yeah um there's there's (laughs) i've even thought i wonder if i'm like subconsciously named after kyle mclaughlin because everyone has a different story so my dad said well that's where your grandma's from kyle saskatchewan and Hmm. my like old like half sister bonnie claims that when she saw my parents and and they were asking her oh what should we name name him she said they had just seen terminator and said oh you should name him kyle after kyle reese so i don't know but um i think it's just my mom saw kyle mclaughlin and it stuck in her head yeah yeah i think it's possible Um, yeah maybe also kyle was an incredibly common name in the early 90s right um but david lynch he always has some something to grab onto right so it's not just weird for the sake of being weird there's always heart there's always humor there's always mystery there's always scary right if you give the like a conventional audience something concrete to hold on to they will tolerate and even relish in weird right like that was a big draw of twin peaks oh it's a mystery kind of soap opera but it's so nuts you gotta see it it's so weird yeah it also is incredibly mystic it's also hilarious it's also this that the other thing like if you give the audience something 
to sit with you during the experiment, they'll they'll watch an experimental movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, what's what's really interesting about Skinnamarink, especially, I'm sure a lot of people have given you this compliment, but I'll be the next one, is just that, like, I think it's kind of unusual for a director in their debut film to have such a such a unique, but also for like well-formed tone. Does that make sense? Like coming right out the gate, you know, it's oh, like yeah. I think you yeah. see a lot of directors that, you know, have a great first movie but it takes them a few tries until they really get like the the tone right and i think it was the fact that skinnamarink i mean full on breaks almost any conventional filmmaking rule like throughout i mean we don't see any of the main characters right like most of the shots are spent filming things that are not anything near the subject right it, i think like that alone is so interesting and um so and I, I actually know how i did that so that was all through finding myself through my youtube series mm -hmm. so just doing those youtube videos after a while i was like okay i didn't really find myself as a filmmaker in college so i'll do these videos and i'll find my voice and over a while i was like this is my voice so when I got to doing my feature, my voice was confident, right? Mm -hmm. Do yeah. um, can, can I ask, do you have like any videos on YouTube from when you were like a kid? Because I know that I got into film as a kid, like making videos with my friend that we that are still on YouTube because neither of us know the password to the channel. I had anymore. like I had ones from high school that I didn't upload to YouTube that were like assignments so i took video class in high school vic uh -huh. had a really good video program and there was in i think grade 11 i think we even did upload it to youtube but took it down but uh and youtube was like brand new at the time too yeah but course. um we it was it wasn't even horror either. It was like, I, we all had to pitch an idea and everyone had their idea. And my idea was, and now it's so copied and cringe and millennial that like, no one, like the, this wouldn't even stand out. But at the time it was a little bit different where I'm like, what if a girl just, it's her day in high school, but it's like a video game. And that's been done to death Whoa. and is like, <laughs> but like that's look, been done the first steps, the to first death, steps. right? And even at the time, I think was was already fairly common, right? Yeah, and so yeah. that was my idea and I pitched it and everyone really liked it. So we filmed that. And outside of that, I don't know if I have a lot of high school stuff. And from film school, there's a few things like... And there's even one, it's so stupid, I can't believe it. So in <laughs> film school, we had a collective channel that we would upload things uh -huh. and like assignments, right? And we had a one basic cinematography assignment of just film two people talking or whatever, do coverage, right? And light it well enough, I don't know. Like have a medium, a close up, a wide shot basic cinematography right and i did i had seen uh, this was well after inland empire but i did my interpretation of a scene from inland empire where laura dern is sitting with her spouse and they're very angry and laura dern says i'm pregnant and She's like, you don't seem very happy about it. And I did that scene, but I played Laura Dern and I, a female friend played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's cool. kind of comedy and it's, it's still on YouTube. And I wanted to take it down ever since the movie. No, blew you, up. Gotta, you gotta keep but, that up. Dude, leave that, that up. up. Leave that up. Because, leave that like, I smoke in it too. But, like, my friends don't remember any of the account information. So it's just there forever. All right, cold uh, cuts crew, go find that, dude. I <laughs> I did a similar one with uh, for class with the scene in I Am Legend where he kills the dog, but my friend played the dog, and it was 
It's kind of erotic. Yeah, it's kind of true. Wait, what is, is, is this a meme or you really did that? I'm oh, it's, erect. it's on YouTube. Me too. <laughs> I've been erect this whole time. <laughs> Yo, we are down to three minutes, 40 seconds. Is, if you have it, to go, feel free. But if you would. I could go longer. I could go, go a little longer. Let's, we'll do another let's go. Go. I'm, ha I'm having a great time. I need I, a little uh, Siggy break because uh, Daddy Harris said, I, I, you know, no smoking. So I'm. But, also should, it, soon. We've had a couple episodes where where old yellow swag smokes weed, and then we uh, kind of lose get a sight loopy. of that. We kind of lose loopy. sight of the vision. So, Yo, in in the last thirty three minutes and thirty <laughs> seconds, I'm gonna ask this now because I'm this is this you could pontificate on forever. Okay. Okay. But before this little break, I wanted to piggyback on this when Harris was talking about this earlier. But on top of everyone, you know, you know, a lot of people saying rave reviews this is game changer. I'm seeing so many credible people too. Not, and I'm seeing random people say it too. But how do you feel about this thing where people are saying, you know, 50 years from now, people are going to look back and Kyle Edward Ball's movie is going to be, it'll be like this was like the thing where it changed the momentum, changed, the yeah. sonic momentum completely of movies. It's completely changed what a horror movie could be. I'm really not trying to deep throat your dick right now, but how do you feel about that sentiment? Are you it's a little unnerved? Whelming and also it is humbling but also a little bit anxiety inducing because okay i'm working on starting to write movie number two mm -hmm. and i it's hard to catch that lightning in a bottle again do you right? feel like, like it has to be avant-garde well i doing it up like a little bit different like that i'm getting all these questions in my head like okay so it can't be a hundred percent like skin and marine because then i'm just doing the same movie again it can't be too different because then it's not my voice and then it's this and then it's that so i'm having all those kind of insecurities and questions mm -hmm. and also like just the regular stuff of, of writing a movie too, but like, and also it's scary too, because, okay. So the guys who did Blair, Witch, they, their career didn't quite blow up. Yeah. And, and I don't know the reasons necessarily behind that. I think Hollywood got their hooks in them a little too hard. Mm. And then another thing was, but in the same vein, Dave Lynch, my my teenage idol right like his first one was a racer head which was a, a kind of weirdly similar story and he was able to come out from that and do still keep his voice but change yeah. and, and grow and do this and that so that's been scary too in the same vein though like not everyone's loved the movie a hundred percent like the movie has plenty of haters i think we have um, some reviews we'll be going over on the uh, we have okay. we have sort of a bit that we wanted to do in the next block maybe that would be fun. i okay, forgot absolutely. my bit What's i was bit? gonna pretend i thought skin and marink was barbarian i totally <laughs> oh. ruined it i have i have some barbarian stories oh, oh really based. i'd like the, to hear in, that in the, uh, did you meet Hollywood... the tall woman did you meet the yeah, barbarian oh, she... That I think that was a man. It is a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Was a guy. <laughs> Wait a I minute. I was trying to have a breastfeed me. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. God damn. Like that was a roll. Get away from me. <laughs> uh, all right. So we'll come back. I'll go to the bathroom. You smoke up, and we'll come back in, in a couple. By minutes. the way, two words for your next movie: rom com. I'm telling you, <laughs> we need the we two need words. The Kevin rom -com. Two words: Adam Sandler. Yo, <laughs> we back. Back, back again, back again. Oh, the uh, beanie! Oh. I know, dude. We've got we got Tim Pool on for the last segment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so. Steven Seagal Pool, baby, the, the uh, winning God. combo. Yo, listen, Skin and Marink, eh? It was okay. Let's talk about Aww. a real movie, baby. Kyle, what's your opinion on the Super Mario movie? I need to know. I haven't seen it yet. What? what? <laughs> How have you not seen it yet, dog? I'm so mad. Man. YMS came on, and I was like begging him. I was like. Give it a chance, bro. Like I, you were talking about uh, imprinting as a kid. I didn't see myself as Mario. He was like my hero because he looked like my dad. They both had mustaches. So now I'm, I'm trying to give him my mustache out. But uh, I was begging YMS, please, please don't shit on the movie. Please don't shit on the movie. Please. This man drops a 20 minute like 
this is the worst. Well, thing. but his thing was also <laughs> so he didn't like the movie, which is like he didn't get the like, movie. Okay, number one, it's a it's a Hollywood movie. He's not exactly hurting anyone. No, number no, two, don't. and his big thing was people were defending the movie before it came out, like so sight unseen, and also. His thing was, he called it a baby movie, <laughs> which like, okay, so, so a thing with him, like, he's a, like, kind of, not comedy, but like, he that's, he, he reviews yeah, movies, yeah. and they're funny, right? Like, he yeah. does these funny things, like, so he called it a bit and people got quite offended by it although i'm biased because he gave my movie a positive review did he, he did okay, okay. i was a little six, worried i was a little yeah. worried he gave it six out of ten he's also i think grew up in edmonton uh, and um there's something he, in the water over there yeah i think you guys are all yeah, looking out for each other on, yeah, yeah. but so a big so let me tell you a funny story about that too so I told my DOP we got into Fantasia and he's like, what's Fantasia? And I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> and then I told him we got signed by Shudder and he's like, what's Shudder? Like, <laughs> your movie sucks came out with a pot, like a review of it. And he's like, Adam, Adam, like, <laughs> you, you know, you dream about these things, but you don't think they're going to happen to you. <laughs> oh my like, God. I'm like, okay. So have you, have but, you talked to, have you talked to YMS at all? Have you guys communicated? We've DM'd. Nice. Like just hi, hi. Thanks for the, just, uh, thanks hi. Like the movie. I'm, but it I'm, feels I'm, weird with the, like, here's the weird thing about ever since the movie. So a lot of the people interviewing me are film critics. Mm-hmm. And it feels like a weird, like, okay, what if I come out with number two when you don't like it? Are you going to feel weird writing a bad review? We're deleting like, this entire interview of Skinnamarink 2 Boogaloo sucks. Like, <laughs> We're, you I'm know, stalling like, this. Yeah, completely. Oh, God. I don't know that guy. I've never, yeah, that's uh, but it, it Oh, wait. Like, you're talking about Kyle Balls? Yeah, I don't like it. It's been. It's been weird like meeting all these film critics like i had a conversation with um this one film she was like the first one to like not publish a review but tell me like okay i'm a film critic you're i love your movie and i had like a follow-up conversation with her and i said so just like when movie number two comes out and you don't let if you don't like it don't feel awkward writing a bad review and she said you know if it's an indie canadian movie like she's like a a lot of times i just won't write a review right Mm because like what good is so it's been this weird thing like i've met so many film critics through all this and it's humanized them in in Wait, because they are just people who like movies and want to, you know. Yeah, I mean, can we can we use this as a segue to talk about uh, Skinnamarink Two won't get skinned again? Is uh, is that on the won't get skinned again? <laughs> is that is that on the horizon or what? What can we expect, uh, like up and coming? So I had a few ideas for follow up movies. And I fell out of love with those ideas for... Now, when you say follow-up, there is there a, a, a second, sequel? A, no sequel. Ever. Second, You're saying that right here. There's never going to be Skinnamarink. How now. would you sequelize Skinnamarink? Bro, you're I, don't saying that now, I don't know. Like, you're I don't saying know that you, now, but I guarantee you 50 years from now, when someone shows up to your door with $20 billion and the most beautiful Filipino man you've ever I don't seen. think it'll take 50 years. I think it's going to take like uh, like maybe next year. That, that could That's happen. true. That's sequel, true. Like, like what? Are they going to get out of the house or more kids going to well, go I'm into just saying, that? Like, bro, you're yeah. prolific and there's other people prolific like David Chase who at gunpoint was like, I would never make a Sopranos movie. Guess what just came out and yeah. so fucked ass a few years ago. I'm <laughs> Do, still um, so mad at that movie, dog. Yeah. So, so well, I don't know how you, but that's different. Sopranos, though, you could see how oh, they could do a movie about the past. There could be a follow-up. But you don't yeah. think your movie was abstract enough, and there were enough things that were unanswered to the audience that you don't think they'd be able to. The say, only oh. thing I could say, it's just it's such a contained 
beginning, middle, end. I don't right. see how the only thing I could see is this is the dad's perspective. That's oh, the only way that, I could would, be see. that would be interesting. That, that would, yeah. be interesting. would be interesting. Where Yo. he entered the house at the same time and maybe the kids are like, I don't know. Dude, you uh, should do a Pink the, Floyd thing. This would transcend. This would be the new, like, how Half-Life 1 changed the game, then Half-Life 2. This would transcend it, bro. You make a, this companion film that you can play directly next to Skinamarink. And it's oh. like, they kind of, like, link or whatever. Anyway, dude. You can do like, that with the Half-Life games? No, no, but the Half-Life games were known for, like, Half-Life 1 came out and they changed the game in terms of, like, these physics puzzles and then two came out, and the physics puzzles were even. All I know about Half Life yeah. really is, is Gary's mod. Gary's yeah. mod. I think the yeah. big thing with I think Half Life, I don't know if it was one or two, but one of them was the first time they implemented like like artificial intelligence in the NPCs, rather than an NPC just standing there being like, "Can you go bring me Flimbus. a gold coin or whatever?" Yeah, yeah like yeah. they actually like walk around walk and bump around. into shit, and yeah, I, I mean they're not intelligent, but it's like kind of cool. I got to ask this. This will potentially, I don't want to hype this up, but this could ruin the movie for me, okay? okay. And if you don't uh, want to ans answer, don't answer. Okay, you you're the director. I'm not your dad. I was going to make a joke right there. I'm not going to. Okay, so in okay. theory, do you think this movie, in your opinion, because I know there's some parts you're like, I don't know, but in your opinion, is there a supernatural element is there something that is actually scary going on in Skin Rink, or is this simply some sort of fever dream? I can't answer that. Ah, fuck. Yeah. Okay, I, I, think, I don't think, and I don't think you fair. should answer that. I don't think yeah. you should. That's I, fair. That's the I, one thing, though, that, like, would make me, even if it wasn't through the dad's perspective, that would make me want and, to see And, and honestly, my, my, my question is, I don't, I actually don't really know which one is scarier because the idea of, even if it's just a kid trapped in his own mind and even if these visions aren't real, isn't that just as terrifying? Isn't that just as this, scary? As yeah, one, it's a different type of scary. Yeah. YouTuber had a really interesting, so he took the, so there's so many theories he came up he had the coma theory which a lot of people have posited right yeah, yeah. and he even he even had it tied to like the knife in the eye scene he had like oh that represents this and this and that like it, he had a really clever way of compartmentalizing everything mm -hmm. so for movie number two so again it's not going to be a sequel i'm going to do a, another horror movie another lo-fi horror movie I had two ideas for movies and I fell out of love with them partially because like I let like Hollywood people get in my ear, which I really shouldn't like you'll bring up an idea and they'll be like, well, that's already in production. And it's like, well, if I had told you the idea for Skin and Marink, would you have been like, oh, well, there's already a movie involving children. So you have mm, to right. or more likely like, well, here's some IP we have that we think would anyway. So um i have another idea hopefully i'll be able to start writing it in july once all the pieces are concrete in my mind and there's no more things i have reservations or questions about i can start writing it in july and hopefully we'll go into production probably next year um so yeah do you all see right. yourself ever venturing into anything outside of horror somewhere along the line or is horror kind of your true love no i i'm always gonna be horror 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 yeah like yeah. horror is my thing it's my most comfortable it's my favorite genre there's so much fun. and horror is so fun because it has to reinvent itself all the time in a way that i don't think necessarily genre movies don't like for example if you take like a movie like All the President's Men and compare it to Spotlight or She Said, like procedural movies, like mm -hmm. uh, great movies, but like there's not a lot changed on how you tell a procedural versus horror just has to keep reinventing itself. Yeah, it's true, yeah. And changing itself and cannibalizing itself in weird ways. Uh, I forgot to, so Barbarian. Oh, so, the Barbarian story. story. Yeah. The cool th it's not really a story so much as like, so doing, again, I got to Hollywood's come knocking, blah, blah, blah. I've met two of the producers through Zoom of Barbarian. Um, Are they on Zoom? 
Did could they, could they afford the paid Zoom version or no? I don't think the meetings went long enough that we needed. Oh, so, so we're already leveled yeah. up. We're already we're cool. but like um, one of them, Zach Crager was going to be on the Zoom meeting, but then he had to like he couldn't do it last minute because mm. he's apparently doing the score for his next movie too. So I wow. heard he was worried that your hair would outstage him. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. what I heard. Yeah. We text. Uh, we text sometimes. That that is cool though. I you know I, my my question about the next movie is because obviously I mean it goes without saying. And then the next one, even if you want to keep the vibe like lo-fi, I am gonna go out on a limb and say that you, whatever studio wants to sign you for this next movie are is gonna be throwing. Your Benjamin budget's gonna be a little. You. Your bigger. budget yeah, is definitely gonna be so, bigger yeah. than fifteen thousand. I don't. I don't want it to be too big because I think you lose something if you go. I don't know. Like, I feel like the smaller, sometimes, at least for what I make, the smaller, the scarier, right? Like, uh, mm-hmm. someone brought up, so to get a certain budget, you'll probably have to have like a name in the movie, which like is fine. But I'm like, I don't like, if you have a celebrity in it, like it makes it a little bit less, sc- I don't know. Like, cause no, it's like, I, I don't think it would that. be, that. you I don't think that. Skin Rank 2 featuring Beetle Moses, Yola Swag. You we're think pretty that low be, key. We're pretty yeah. small time. I mean, I think you would still be scared. Well, you, yeah, you're a little, you're kind of small time. <laughs> or I yeah, could just so like fun. do the skinnering thing and not show your faces. Or no, oh, yeah. if I'm in the movie, you show my face. <laughs> it'll just be the, it'll just be Zach's like big ass. Just you can like, do my like, big ass. That? Yeah, that'd be like, pretty dope. Did uh, you post your ass? Was it Mastodon? <laughs> oh, or? I post my ass on everything. Yeah, I, uh, you said you posted. You I posted it recently you? on uh, Blue Sky. And you didn't yeah. get the the, the yeah, all I got that you had. was Vosh like that's a nice ass and I was like bro please delete your <laughs> please, please delete, delete your comment please mom delete your comment please, well mom, my please. my question about this next movie is I was and you kind of already answered it but do you just have um any anxieties about because Skinamarink like you can tell top to bottom the way that it was filmed especially the fact that you wrote it directed it and edited it where you had a lot of control over that that environment it was in your own childhood home and it was a very mm-hmm. small crew or and cast like if if you wanted to venture into something <laughs> bigger do you have anxieties about that about uh, more hands in the pie like more people kind of like there i do but i think you know stepping stones right i did all these stepping stones so naturally the next one will probably be a bit bigger i would still like to insist that okay i would like to write direct and edit it and the mm-hmm. editing is is uh, like and i i will even say like with the next one i'd like as much control as possible but obviously with more money involved um i will have to cede some of that control like i don't know if i'll have final say on final cut but it's all about working with someone right i have a production company that i will not name that is i'm fairly certain and they're fairly certain they're good it's not a fuck but Are it's, sure? it's somewhat <laughs> but it's, it well we'll see how this company goes right because uh-huh. like stuff changes maybe it will have to be a 24 i have had uh, a meeting uh, with hey how's it going meeting with a 24 you know, they um, would they would they, be brain dead to let you slip 100%. through their fingers they would they would have to be a bunch of fucking idiots. Well, and whatever, also like whatever there's studio nothing... doesn't let you take your cut we'll get a release the balls cut going we'll get a some of these and... some of these meetings they're so cool like i had a meeting with the people at universal who deal with the universal monsters property oh cool hmm. that is and cool. oh is skin so, break gonna be part of their marvel monster universe that they're and the on? the dc universe it's just the fucking you direct a, well, are you gonna direct so, next batman movie? The, that'd be fucking in awesome. the meeting they didn't really so i'm like so to start out i love dracula i've seen it a hundred times i fall asleep like the original bella lugosi dracula oh, oh amazing. That's awesome. sometimes That's like it's my this is my movie i go to bed to movie uh-huh and sometimes i switch between that and frankenstein and about halfway through the meeting they were like you know 
this is great. We have a lot of, like, I, we haven't had a single meeting yet where someone said they watched Dracula a hundred times and we're so excited about universal monsters and like, hmm. like the invisible and this and that. Well, they're rebooting yeah. the, the Marvel thing, right? Marvel. I, I say Marvel, but they, it was like 10 years ago, they were trying to do their own, you know how Marvel has these different monsters. monsters. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like monsters coming together. Yeah. But I heard they're rebooting it now. I don't I don't know so like I'm assuming thing, that's what they were talking to you about that's what I heard they were talking like we just sort of kibitzed and they um is that a Jewish word I think it is it's Yiddish, Yiddish yeah, yeah it is. Nice. um I use a lot of Yiddish um Harris, so, Harris is Yiddish Harris is it. Jewish I am Jewish yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. and we, we we have we have Yiddish Mazel. lessons on this podcast Mazel Tov yeah we have we have uh Yiddish lessons on this podcast every once in a while too I call I'm a lot in... of people Shlemiels 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 there it is that's yes. it <laughs> I, I, I never I use a lot of Yiddish because my dad so my dad used a lot of Yiddish because my dad's quite a bit older than a lot of like the people I would grow up with their dads, like my parents were 20 years apart. Hmm. And so his generation, all their comedians were Jewish, right? So he used mm -hmm. a ton of Yiddish growing up. And so I got a lot of like, Kyle, are you, are you Jewish? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not Jewish. I just use I'm a Jewish, lot of Yiddish. Jewish adjacent. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. Jewish. I just Me use too. a lot of Yiddish and have, and also I guess it's cause like, we had such a small cast and crew, right? And just mm -hmm. two of like two of them happened to be Jewish just by coincidence, like my assistant director and uh the mother of the girl who plays Kaylee is Jewish. Mm -hmm. So I think they just oh, it's like yeah. <laughs> Was uh how does this work? Yeah, I don't it's a totally random question just popped in my mind, but uh with the kids being in a movie that's this like disturbing you and kids man always questions about kids <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kidding i'm kidding I, the, <laughs> the, uh, do, do they have to sign some type of like agreement that they're not going to be like disturbed by their experience like film so this movie? all so their parents had to sign an agreement mm -hmm. obviously and so the agreement works for both parties so obviously i had a part saying like we will be responsible and take seriously the safety of your children during the shoot, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, well, I imagine but... they weren't very scared in the scenes. No, because no, like it's, not, yeah. a lot of the acting was very simple stuff. Yeah, like they did, they, and so the girl who plays Kaylee, she's seen the movie. Really? And she's well, she's, she's a, obviously a little bit older and has already gotten into horror at a young age because her mom's a big horror fan hmm. and she's i think like maybe like i think it's maybe reasonable for her at i think now she might be nine to have seen the movie maybe it's not quite age appropriate but her mother said you know she's seen enough horror and she's in the movie that she's maybe mature enough to yeah. she'll appreciate it too like 10 she's, oh five ten she years saw it in the, she course. saw it in the theater when we that's oh wow it. that's cool yeah and um would you the ever boy, the boy no, hasn't seen it i think he's still too young he's too little, he's probably yeah, too he's too little. yeah are you gonna be a little tarantino in not the foot aspect but uh would you maybe consider yourself point. like maybe not you know your next movie, but three or four movies down the line. Used to be able to. Like... Oh, I didn't even notice Whoa. what was going on. <laughs> Wait a minute, say something and do that again, because I think we didn't get it. I think we didn't get it. Dude. Say something. Hi, I'm Kyle Ever Ball, and you're watching Disney Channel. Wow. <laughs> Base. <laughs> That's Base. what we needed. That's the clip. But would you ever recast both of those children in yeah. a future? Yeah. Yeah. Would or you the, like to? Or you, the you, adult. You give me the, the same adults vibe too. Sorry, I just cut you up twenty-eight times. Or the adults too. You give me the same vibe, Harrison. I do where it's like, and I really, I dude, I really resonate with what you're saying with the tight knit group. Tight knit, smaller things. I feel like you can really make the coolest shit. Yeah. Yeah. The absolutely. Most hands in it. And uh, would you want to do something where you you literally only use a single set of actors? I know that's kind of hard. It's you've done one movie. 
but yeah like it's hard i would totally recast everyone who was in the movie in a heartbeat but some of it comes down to like just going into the next one so a with the kids it's difficult too because like well they they're still in school right like they, right, right and then with the grown-ups there's a thought of would i even have a role that they would fit for the next one right or even yeah. i've been talking with all these zoom meetings with holly hollywood like okay like well would you be open to filming in Europe or would you be open to filming in Los Angeles? And I would, but it's like, well, then I, we would have to fly them out. And that, so I don't yeah. know, I would recast them if the opportunity was presented and I had a role for them, but I yeah. don't know if I will, or. This hmm. could come into play with, cause you're saying, you know, if you've all this extra money, but you still want to keep it low budget, you could just throw that money into the, if you do film, say, in Antarctica or something, for some reason, the flights and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, like, we, like, the next one, I think, will probably be a couple million. But, like, we'll see. And it depends, Crazy. right? And, again, I don't even know. I have a fairly solid, I'm in that beautiful stage before I'm going to write the script where I'm like, okay, I know more or less what the movie is going to be. Point A, point B, da, 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 da. I have all the beats, I have the characters. I still have some questions of like, oh, like, is this, should I change this character? Should I change this? Da, da, da. But I have a beginning, middle, end and the, the meat in between to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about the idea. So, but there's parts where it's like, oh, this will require, this might require like a legit special effects budget, right. or this might require us filming on a soundstage or filming in a small town or filming here or filming in Los, like, I don't know. So I don't know how that's all going to pan out, but we'll see. Because the other one too, because we were so constricted, it was easy to know, okay, that'll be a digital effect. This will da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And the other one, like movie number two, I don't, I don't know where we're going to film it, where we're going to, because I'm also at a point with the second one where a lot of that thankfully will be taken care of by someone else. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I would, I mean, I could personally say I would freaking love to see you like have a movie that was that was kind of like a creature feature but in your style like I using i like had a um so one of my ideas that i fell out of love with um i had an idea of doing a 1930s black and white early sound pied piper that's and doing it as a universal monsters movie and i was really excited about it and then I was telling people about it and this one person for a small production company um, was like, hey, not to burst your bubble, but there's already two of that in production and one of them has Elizabeth what? Hurley attached. Right, the, uh, and, the Epstein documentary. They're doing well, this. Yeah. <laughs> But also it's like, well, I said, well, like, Freddy Krueger is the Pied Piper. Slender Man is the Pied Piper. Like also, yeah. like I, I, I can guarantee sight unseen these two Pied Pipers that are in development. Like number one, one of them is probably not going to be the Pied Piper by the time it gets to editing. It's sure. going to be called like the Monster in the Wood or some bullshit. Yeah. And like number two, this hypothetical Pied Piper that Elizabeth Hurley it, is attached to, uh -huh. like which it, she might even not even be attached to later on. Like I, I doubt yeah, it's is hypothetical. Gonna be, yeah. Even yeah. remotely the idea that Kyle wanted to do for Pied Piper. Yeah. But anyway, so I fell out of love with that fucking idea. The Pied Piper fucking is a douchebag. This is how you know the Pied Piper is a sick fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's a, well, he's you a had, bad guy because he steals the kids. That's if, true. Dude, if you had the power to control rats and have rats doing backflips <laughs> and playing chess with you, yeah. why the fuck would you go get children? 
Why are you collecting? Ch- play with your rats, dude. Yeah, play what with the, the rats. Fuck is but wrong? he stole. He stole the children as revenge, as not revenge, but to say, okay, well, you didn't. Pay oh, because they didn't I'm pay him. T- you didn't pay uh, him. I got rid of your fucking rats. But then, what do you do with the? Because then, if he's not a creepy pedo, what he just sits in his cave with all these kids? I think it's implied that he killed the kids. Maybe I don't know. All right, that's base. Interesting. That's kind of base. Okay, I don't know if this um, is like a based. Michael Jackson situation where he's like, "Hey, no, the kid, the bed is so big, we won't even touch each other on the bed." <laughs> so it's stupid. Amazing. It's a beautiful Look, base you we, just made. That's rich. I we, still uh, encounter people who like defend him, even oh, after I, all, even dude. after all the evidence is clearly he did it. Anyways. Look, I, I see it. I see it on, on on Instagram. For some reason, I get fed Michael Jackson videos on my Instagram reels, and if you click on the comments, it's always like. He was such a beautiful soul. He didn't. He never harmed anybody. The media like got to get him. Like, like, you can, you can appreciate his music, yeah. and still, like, like you can't. Like, he clearly there has been, or like something being was a, up. A, something a was filmmaker, up. Something was up. You'll yeah. still see people who like defend roman polanski and it's like he admitted he did it literally right? like, yeah. like yeah you can still like rosemary's baby oh i love that because movie. because movie. like so by the way he good. wasn't yeah. like he wasn't the only person who made that movie mia farrow like like you're yeah. discrediting all those other people when you do, you can still say that this movie was good, and the person who made it was a monster. Thank God, though, Absolutely. that his that the guy helping him direct that movie had him change the name because Rosemary's Hot Baby that doesn't even <laughs> sound good. Not, it was not. That oh. doesn't even sound good, dude. My boss, I used to work with. Um, I'm not gonna say his name. He's a very cool guy, and he's he's African American, and uh, there were a, a lot of African American employees there at the music studio. And uh, Michael Jackson came up one day, and I was like, yeah. I, I said something to of like, yeah, it was wild that that happened. And, dude, they all went off on me. And Damn. to the extent of, like, that was all made up. Yo, a bunch of fucking angry white people made that shit up about him. And I was just like, I have no horse in this race. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, okay. Can we please I, I, I do want to point me. out, like, I think it was, like, the document, the big HBO or whatever documentary yeah, about Neverland. the abuse, was my that nickname. was produced by Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, was it? It was. Yeah. I knew that. So yeah. like, oh, yes. and she she used to be like not friend, like I I don't think they were, had sleepovers, but she they had were, a relationship with him. She had right. a relationship with him, but yeah. also yeah yeah. I mean, look, it, it's clear like. The dude was quite unusual, and I think his relationship with kids was kind of like even just, another yeah. person. You're just Pied not Piper supposed esque. to do that. Very Pied Piper. Piper yeah, was. yeah. Um, I can I like tell. So speaking of that over of people, so it's been weird. Like having all these meetings with Hollywood people. Occasionally, Weinstein will come up in weird ways, right? What? Just because, so, well, because so many people in Hollywood knew him, right? Like I. I had this one meeting with someone who very nice woman and she was like, so this is my history. I worked for like, I don't know what the companies were, but she's like Paramount and then this company. And then, the, and then she's like, and then I, I did work for the Weinstein company at one point. Oh right? my in hushed like, tones. Because yeah. his, his tentacles or I had another meeting with a company and they're like, oh, we just got the rights to to scary movie. And I'm like, oh, that's all. And I was telling her, like, oh, it'd be so neat to see like a scary movie that does elevated horror. So hereditary, da 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 da. Like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, or skin Oh, or that would be like, so that'd sick. Be crazy. I was crazy. even pitching her ideas like, oh, for hereditary, like, like you could just have her head hit a billion fucking things. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> donk the donk the donk. Yeah. And then yeah. just the idiot brother turns and is like, Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's a yeah. throwback. So good. Yeah. Throwback so joke. Good. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yo, real quick. Oh. I'm having a blast, by the way. I don't know if you could tell. Harris, I've never seen him this happy. Love of my <laughs> life. I do want to thank the patrons real quick, though. Uh, we do have some executive patrons. I want to thank Alberto, Rap Rap Pew Pew, Coin Plant, Conga Heli, Gizan, Gwyn, Snake Oiler Man, and Snake Oiler Woman. This guy signed up twice. Super fan. Amazing. Aww. Super exact. Baby. Protista, Shrek the Third, and Shalom Guy. And Trash Bins. And T. Stilly. Holy shit. Wow. 
Dude, that's a long list. Look at all these dude, guys. Exactly. Love you guys. You guys fucking Love you rock. Guys. You guys Amazing. fucking rock. You fucking um, rock. But you rock the most, Mr. Balls. Yes. Okay? Uh, you hey, rock the you. most. I had such a fucking blast. Uh, I'd love to have you come on again if you uh, ever have free time. Once you get the, the liminal stuff. Oh, yeah, that totally. Set yeah, that'd up. be great. Look, I, I, there's, I don't there's... think this is going to change this all. Yeah, no, I actually all. think I'm it's... I'm a fairly it's... minimal. So big surprise. I'm a fairly minimalist liver. So I'll like, send you a poster. Is, uh, I have a edit of me with my ass, except I'm part robot. It's really yeah, cool. that's cool. You can throw that up in the back; it'll be based. Look, be I, based. I had this. I had this little uh, this bit that I kind of wanted to put to you. Where uh, I mean, obviously, we've been singing the praises of this movie right the whole the whole time, and I can't I can't sing its praises highly enough. I think it's extremely unique, creative. I think. Look, you went into it with a shoestring budget that you crowdfunded, and it made millions. I mean, the top yeah. to bottom, you cannot deny this movie was a fucking success, right? That being said, all right, it was quite polarizing. And yeah. I have I have screenshotted here some funny negative reviews from Letterboxd from some people who did uh, not like the movie. If and you I was drag them to the chat, I, could... I think they'll and, pop up. Oh, really? I don't know yeah. if I can... I don't know if I had to drag in the chat in time before we run out, but uh, maybe, you know, can... it's subjective, you know, we, I, I was just thinking, I would like to hear your comments on just one of these here. Let's see. Okay. I this saw one... one today earlier that I was laughing at. I Some was... of them are funny too. Yeah. Though. Like this one professional film critic from Boston just wrote Skinnamarink is nothing. <laughs> and I said to G like my DOP Jamie, who's a big Seinfeld fan like me, I'm like, Jamie, we did it. Jerry would be proud. We made a movie <laughs> it's about, about nothing. nothing. Yeah. yeah. That I is, have, I have that's never good. heard. First that's of all, funny. love the movie. If I ever received that criticism, I would fling myself from <laughs> reading the phrase YOLO swag no, is I'm, nothing. Well, right now I'm really happy. Like sometimes it well, he's hurts, right. He's objectively wrong. Oh yeah. no, you shouldn't. You, wrong, but... dude, you shouldn't. You shouldn't listen to any of this crap. I don't. I don't subscribe to any of this shit. Before I've just I never it, heard but... so Did much punch in three so words. You guys know the um, comic artist Adam Ellis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Harris yeah. loves it. So he hated <laughs> he hated it and he so he saw it in the theater, then went to the trouble of going home, taking pictures of like a doorknob, a ceiling, a hallway, a toilet, and said, like, wow, I love Skinnamarink, and then posted all those. So he did homework at Dude, shitting on the movie. Adam Ellis, you heard it here. We're com we are coming for I will, you. I, we were com we are coming Ellis, for you. Your joke wasn't funny. Even. We're you go deal, watch though, your you back. You could have blown him the fuck out if you had simply <laughs> replied. This is why you should have been known us earlier, bro. If you had replied with this <laughs> fucking cringe comic that's like, shh, let people enjoy things. He oh would, yeah, I forgot. He there you go. There you go. Destroyed. Out. Destroyed. Destroyed. And it's kind of rich of him, like shitting on someone for being repetitive. But right, True. yo, Got Adam him. Ellis. Oh. Adam Get Ellis. Collectively, we're fucked, all gonna boy. fuse together. Eat our ass, dude. Wait, let me. Yeah, I'm just gonna read. Adam. Let me read this one real quick. Yo, Adam Ellis. Adam this, Smellis. Sorry. Got, got him. This, this guy wrote. He put one and a half stars. Quite boring. I recommend watching with Family Guy clips playing on a second screen. <laughs> How do you feel about boring, that? Boring as hell. Right? Yeah, this is a, yeah. this uh this one says looking at the wall simulator 2022. Yeah, that was not so funny. Uh, this one, yeah. this one actually uh Justin Wang wrote this one. He wrote, I had oh. high hopes for this one, but it felt like they just took this unique experimental presentation, then filled it with spooky cliches and stretched it out to a feature. Hey, I got news for you, Justin. That's a that's what a fucking horror movie is. You ever watch a movie? Also, before? real quick, Justin, I like Justin, although he refused to come on the podcast. I'm going to kill you, Justin. <laughs> the way that was written was like, I hope a hot woman sees my letterbox review and I get pussy. That was the I thought Justin Wang review. followed me on Twitter. Does he, he not? He should. He should. And he and left you should, that review. I'm gonna send you that screenshot right now. You send it to him and be like, This you champ? You do I'm this? I'm following him to his house after <laughs> I might be thinking of the wrong person. Oh shit, we're almost at yo, we love Dude. you. This is thank so you so much, man. Dope dog. You're the man. Very excited thank to you. talk Give to you. Give my skin a ring. Your skin on she's he's skin on my marink. 
till I come upstairs. Base. All right. Hey. Base. <laughs> till I put the knife in my eye. Godspeed. Oh, love Godspeed. you. Thank you so much. much we love. will see you on on the next the next episode. We'll bring I'm it. Trying to, I'm trying to get you and YMS on the same app to talk about the oh, Mario movie. We Watch the Mario a, movie. We, we can have a long hair off. Oh, base. oh base. A, be- a beautiful man off. That would be amazing. He is a, a horse furry. I feel like you would be a horse furry based on your hair. Oh. Oh. <laughs>